We are in the Leverett, Massachusetts Public Library and viewing an exhibition of my work, Leonore Alanis's Nature Prints. The 17 pieces exhibited here for two months comprise about 20 years of work dedicated to nature printing, a direct printing method. And in the exhibition are prints of bird parts, feathers, edible plants, invasive plants, grasses, weeds, and seeds. I teach the technique and would enjoy if, it, if other people would also practice this way of recording and collaborating with nature. This print is called Partnership. I don't know what plant it is. I found it in the woods. Uh, it's a low growing plant and I just enjoy the grey shades, the grey tones and the way the two leaves interact. This plant is an invasive plant. It's called cow parsley and it migrated from the Caucasus and is found now in Massachusetts in very few places, supposedly 16 plants. It grows up to six, seven feet tall and is to be eradicated when spotted. This is uh, also an invasive. It's called plum poppy or Maclaya cordata in Latin. It grows also six to seven feet tall and was imported probably because of its yellow juice of which people may die. This is uh, the leaf of a poppy plant with the seed capsule shown sideways and from the top. And it's probably the closest to a traditional botanical illustration in that it shows the different plant parts. This frame um, has the image of maple seeds in it and as they float in the air, very light color, brown on tan paper. The frame is a stained cherry wood, just as the one that was earlier shown, handmade here in Massachusetts from locally harvested wood. This calligraphy banner is silk organza and there are 108 leaves imprinted on it from one tree. It has an inscription on it that is the Metta Sutta and it reads as follows. May all beings be happy. May they live in safety and joy. May all living beings, whether weak or strong, tall, stout, average or short, seen or unseen, near or distant, born or to be born, may they all be happy. This is a banner to hang in a window or a place of the person's choice. I see these banners also in public places, free hanging, and they give pause. That's their sole purpose. 108 is a sacred number in Buddhist and Indian teachings, and how people use it is really up to them. I just enjoy printing the ginkgo leaves especially. Oh. This piece is called Falling Seeds or Seeds of Change and it is one in a series where the seeds were falling off the actual grass as I worked and printed and colored the seeds. With every print more and more seeds came off so I had to print them, um, ink them individually and then place them but they still have this airborne quality to them. This is a group of small prints. We have on the left ginkgo leaves and here sage leaves and on the side a small plant that grows in the woods here in New England. I don't know the name unfortunately but I call it smileys. This is a print of a kale leaf. Part of the edibles that I focused on here in New England in the year 2011. 
And that is one of my favorites. It is a Napa cabbage leaf imprinted and on a colored plate. It's very electric. And the print measures about 10 by 16 inches. And this is a staghorn cabbage that I imprinted first in black and then hand colored. I call it the kale mandala. And the rainbow colors in that are particularly enticing. I see this used maybe for a children's book to show children what, how much fun actually vegetables can be and perhaps they can even print with them. This is another staghorn kale leaf, just printed in one color, but it shows beautiful detail. And it's not often that a print has so much detail because it's a trial and error and it's very unpredictable, the whole technique, which will also be evident in this print. There, I was very lucky that all six leaves have a similar quality and I call it asymmetrical symmetry. It's self-evident why. And the leaves are mulberry, oh, leaves from the mulberry tree. This is a double print where I sandwiched an inked feather between one sheet of paper and then it was pressed in a book binding press, very, very hard, many pounds, much more than I could have done by hand. And the result is quite good in that a lot of detail of the feathers, of, of the feathers visible. Here is a print of a feather again, it's hand colored in a cherry frame and I don't know where the bird is or was, but I found a feather. So it's a found object that I just chose to print. And next to it is the feather of a swan. And I printed it in black and then hand colored it with watercolors. And the next image is the entire tail, all the tail feathers of a cooper hawk. It was brought to me dead. It had died of unknown causes. And I printed the tail feathers in um, different ways. And this is one of the better ones. Here we have the wing of the hawk. We saw the tail feather before. This is the full width of it in pretty good detail. Printed on Japanese rice paper with water-soluble oil inks. This is the leaf of the Japanese paper tree. It spans 41 inches wide by 43 inches tall. And it comes from the Botanical Garden of the Smith College in Northampton. It's been inked with Procyon dyes and not uh, steam set and washed yet, but it's a teaser for the next video on nature printing on textiles.